Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for being here. My name is Amram Steinmetz, and um, I'm going to be talking about generators, iterators, and async functions in JavaScript. So let me share my screen, and we'll get started. So let's start with uh, generator functions. Um, what are generator functions? There are new type of functions added to JavaScript and ES6, and they're functions which can be exited and later re-entered. So unlike ordinary functions in JavaScript, which just run from top to bottom, when you invoke them, these functions can be started and stopped. Uh, there are functions which can return multiple values, and it is also, and it is also possible to uh, pass values into and out of the generators as it progresses. Um, so let's take a look at some uh, syntax over here. Um, this is a simple uh, generator function, and as you can see, there are two things that are different uh, from ordinary functions. Uh, the first thing is that star um, at the function name, and that just tells us that this is a generator function. And the second thing is that yield keyword on the second line, which I'll be going over uh, what exactly that does. So what are the characteristics of a generator function? Um, so a generator function does not execute its body immediately when invoked. An iterator object for the function is returned instead. So if you see on the bottom line of the code over there, we uh, call add one and we save that to the iterator variable. Um, when that iterator's next method is called, so every iterator has a next method, the generator's function body is executed until the first yield expression. Uh, the yield keyword then pauses the function and yield is an intermediary return. So the function will run up until that yield statement and return five. But that value five is not outputted like a, as a simple value like a normal function. It, um, it actually returns an object with a value key and a done key. The value is the yielded, um, the value key contains the yielded value and the done key um, is a Boolean which tells us uh, whether the generator function has uh, finished executing or not. So, uh, so we called next once and then, and that paused it. And to continue executing the function, we have to call next again. And um, that will continue the function. And we can actually pass a value into next at this point. And when we pass a value in, um, that will replace the yield statement with the value that we pass in. So in this case, when we call it.next at the arrow over there, yield five will be replaced with the value 10. So X will contain the value 11, and that's what will be logged um, at the end of the function. So here's another uh, quick example. Um, we have a function with, uh, a generated function with uh, four yield statements and then a return. So what we do is we call the function, save that to an iterator variable, we call next five times. The first time it returns an object value one, and done is false because we're still in progress, and then two, three, four, and finally uh, it returns an object with value five and a done, uh, with the done property being true because the function has uh, finished executing. Uh, here's a quote from Kyle Simpson. The main strength of generators is that they provide a single threaded synchronous looking code style while allowing you to hide the asynchronicity away as an implementation detail. So what that means is that uh, the great thing about generator functions is, actually one of the great things are, that um, you can write uh, functions that do asynchronous operations in the same style as blocking functions. So here's an example of that. On the top over here, I have a function called make Ajax call that takes a URL um, and the callback function. And then the second function over there is request, is request which calls that uh, make Ajax call function and passes it a callback, which uh, calls next on an iterator with, with the response value from the Ajax call. So in other words, what the Ajax uh, function, uh, what the Ajax call returns, that is the value that next is being called with. And then if you look at the main function, uh, the main function um, has a yield for this request function. It saves that, it, 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 uh, it, it, it assigns that to the result value and then just logs results. So if you look at the main function uh, that, um, so we get it started with uh, calling main and saving it to the it variable. We call it.next. Um, once, once we get to this, that 
it that next starts executing the function over here. Uh, once the request um, function finishes executing and the callback uh, runs, um, it.next is called again, and this yield gets replaced with the value that re that's returned from the Ajax call, and that gets assigned to result, and then we go ahead and log the result. So I just, I just want to show you another function, which is written with promises, and, and I want to show you that same function written in, with, generator function, with a generator, and to show you the contrast between the, between the styles. So here we have a function that gets all, all of a user's uh, a list of all, all repos for a given user on GitHub. So the first, first thing that we do here is we get a GitHub username for this user from the database. And then when that returns, we call get repos, which, uh, which uh, calls the GitHub API and gets a list of all uh, that user's uh, repos. And then we log those repos. So as you can see, this function is, um, looks very different than, uh, re uh, than regular blocking synchronous code. On the other hand, on the other hand this uh, generator function does the same exact thing, but it looks more like blocking code. So first on the first line, we call that get GitHub username, and when that returns, um, that's saved to username, and then we call get repos with that username, and that's saved to the repos, that's assigned to the repos value, and then we return those repos. The problem with this function is that since it's a generator function, we can't actually um, go ahead and execute this function without having some complex pattern of, you know, getting an iterator, calling next, calling next again when, uh, you know, when the get GitHub username returns, and then and so on and so forth until we get that final value out. So what we could do is we can write a spawn function, which is a uh, pattern that actually does that logic for us. It, uh, you know, it, it takes the generator, it gets the iterator out of it, and, uh, and, calls, and it calls next when, uh, when each of those promises returns. Um, and the way we would use that is uh, on the last line, we would call that spawn function with the get user repos function, and that would return a promise. Um, so as you can see, this is a, you know, pretty com uh, it's pretty complex to write this function. And um, luckily for us, um, JavaScript and ES7 actually gives us a new type of function called async functions, and which are actually an, an abstraction uh, over that uh, ge um, complex generator pattern. And um, so let's take a look at those functions. Um, what are async functions? Uh, they're, syntact they're syntactic sugar for a complex generator pattern, that pattern that we saw before. Uh, they're functions that can be halted in a non-blocking way. Um, they use the await keyword to wait for a promise to resolve, and they return a promise for the return value. So let's take a look at an example. This is the same uh, get user repos function that we um, that, that I showed um, just before. And here we have an async function. As you can see, the keyword in, uh, in the beginning of the function is async. And um, that await keyword just waits for that get GitHub username promise to resolve with the username and then, and then continues running that function. And uh, then, that, then the await get repos um, awaits for that get repos with the username to return and then assigns it to repos and then returns repos. And the way to uh, call this async function is the same way we call any other function. We just call get user repos with the user, and um, and that returns a promise, and we dot then off of that. So as you can see, this looks very much like uh, this async function looks very much like um, just ordinary functions, and it's actually using um, uh, asynchronous uh, asynchronous calls. So why use async functions uh, to get rid of callback hell in an even more efficient way than using promises? Um, to simplify performing some behavior on a group of promises and to write asynchronous code in the same style as blocking code. Um, another great thing about async functions is that you can use um, traditional error handling methods with async functions. Um, in pro when, you, when you use promises, there's a whole new pattern of, of error handling with catch. Um, with that catch or with a um, reject function. Over here, we can use async functions and use just the traditional try catch since it's all written in, our, in, a, in the ordinary function style. So that, that catch will just handle any errors. So uh, most browsers at this point do not natively support using async functions since it's a pretty new feature. Um, but Babel does have a plugin and a polyfill for it. 
which you can look up on the website how to, exactly how to use. Um, I didn't get into that in the interest of time. But um, Babel actually uses that generator pattern that we showed to transpile the async and await keywords. Um, and um, here are some resources that I use, some great resources, resources on um, generators and uh, just async functions. And uh, that's my talk. Uh, thanks for listening.